The Earth is an amazing blue planet, covered 75% with water, the essence of life itself. Without water, life would not exist. Water makes our planet unique in our solar system, and the presence of water is what astronomers look for in their search for life on other planets. Like the Earth, the human body is also, on average, 75% water. Without water, none of the processes that support life can exist. While we can go without food for many weeks, we can only live a few days without water. Yet only 2% of the Earth's water is drinkable. And billions of people worldwide don't have access to clean drinking water. In this video, you'll learn a lot about water. You'll also be introduced to Dr. Richard Cohen, MD, a doctor who practices integrative anti-aging medicine and performance sports nutrition. We really don't think too much about water. It's something that comes out of our tap. It's something that's in the ocean. But um, what I want people to realize is that we are essentially water. Our brain is 90% water. Our blood is 80% water. Our muscles are 70% water. So without water, our bodies cease to exist. Water is the essence of life. Water carries oxygen and nutrients to the cells. Water regulates body temperature. Water helps the body absorb nutrients and convert food to energy. Water protects and cushions vital organs and cushions the joints. Water removes metabolic waste from the cells through the lymphatic system. Without water, life ceases to exist. Water is just water, right? Tap water, filtered water, spring water, well water, bottled water. Some are a little more pure than the rest. Others have more minerals and taste better. You may pay more for the ones from Fiji or France or some glacier in Canada. But water is just water. Or is it? Volumes have been written on the subject, and the truth is, not all water is the same. Where did water come from? Um, water came from rain, snowflakes, um, came from streams, underground reservoirs. And what we're learning now, and this is the case with most issues, and m m most, you know, when you go back to how things used to be. So if we look at water um, the way it used to be, there are three or four structural and biochemical differences than what exist today. For most of his life, Nobel Prize winner Henri Kawanda studied the water of the Hunza people who lived high in the Himalayan mountains. Natural health practitioner Ariana Nation was also fascinated by the Hunza people and their water. In my research, I discovered that there's a long history of scientific research about water and its healing ability. And this, this Kangen water has quite a history. It's a long history. And one of the things that fascinated me is the Hunza people and their ability to live 120 to 140 years without the degenerative diseases that we suffer here in the United States and all around the world. Why did the Hunza people live so long? Why were they so healthy? Kawanda and others believe it is the water. Their water came from glacial streams and it had very unique properties. It was microclustered. It had a different viscosity and surface tension. It carried lots of minerals that gave it a high alkaline pH. It also had an extraordinary amount of active hydrogen. Hydrogen with an extra electron. The presence of extra electrons made the water an antioxidant. All these properties combined contributed to the health and longevity of the Hunza people. Water similar to that of the Hunza people are found in other places around the world. The Caucasus Mountains of Azerbaijan, the Xinjiang region of China, and the Andes Mountains are just a few. In research, the Russians and the French and all, a lot of people have researched this. They found that it's their source of water. And it's from the glaciers that surround the mountainous region where they live. The common denominator uh, with all these different cultures that have this vibrancy is their source of water and the properties that that water consists of. When we look at natural water, you know, there, there are four or five different properties um, that, that are critical. 
So while adding a mineral buffer to a filtered water is certainly more beneficial to get some of these mineral salts into our body, it still doesn't create that same process of having this, these free electrons to having the negative ORP. It still does not create a microclustered state. Okay, and, and th those three in and of itself, even if you're filtered, you're losing those benefits. Or you're, not you're not gaining the benefits of what's seen with natural water. So while it's a small step to take, beneficial, as opposed to drinking acidic water, it's not providing the same benefits. Is the tap water we drink today anything like the glacial milk that the Hunza people drink? Not even close. It has lost most of its living energy properties as it has traveled through our municipal water system. It is free of pathogens most of the time, but now carries chlorine, fluoride, and chlorine byproducts. It is sometimes contaminated with radium, rocket fuel, and pharmaceuticals like birth control pills. If your pipes are old, your water may be contaminated with lead or other heavy metals. And if the water where you live is acidic, water treatment plants add lye or ammonia to make it neutral. Not exactly glacier milk, is it? We're going back to the natural state of water is essential and critical for health. But we haven't done that, have we? Instead, we came up with a better answer, bottled water. Last year, Americans spent more on bottled water than on iPods or movie tickets. $15 billion. Every year, we pitch 38 billion water bottles into landfills, over a billion dollars worth of plastic. Only 9% of plastic water bottles are recycled. 91% become litter or landfill. A large percentage of this trash finds its way to the oceans, where it ends up part of a floating island in the Pacific, twice the size of Texas. But you do understand chemicals and toxins in your water are not healthy. And we do understand that having a plastic dump the size of Texas floating around in the Pacific Ocean and now is broken down into micro little plastics and getting into fish and other animals is not a good thing. The environmental cost of bottled water is not just the trash it generates. It requires two liters of oil to make a one liter plastic bottle and transport it to the consumer. Spending thousands of dollars to ship water from Fiji to drink in the United States and the energy that requires to do that is ludicrous. More than a million bottles a day of Fiji water, untouched by human hands, is produced in a country 6,700 miles away from California and transported halfway around the world for our consumption. At the same time, more than 50% of the people in Fiji don't have access to safe drinking water. Oh, by the way, you might want to know that by the time Fiji water gets to you, it is only slightly alkaline and has a positive ORP. It's not Fiji water anymore. Is bottled water any better than tap water? Given what it costs, it should be, but it's not. In fact, a significant percentage has more contaminants than are allowed in tap water. Most of it is purified municipal tap water that has been cleaned up through reverse osmosis, which not only removes chlorine and other contaminants, but strips the water of all minerals. Reverse osmosis also wastes 4 to 10 gallons of water for every gallon produced. In Japan, RO water is known as dead water. Nearly all bottled water we tested came out as acidic. Even spring water that should be alkaline came out acidic. Even worse is that all bottled water we tested had a highly positive ORP, or oxidation reduction potential. Water that has a negative electrical charge, like the natural ancestral waters, is best. Bottled water may be clean, but it does not have the life-giving properties of natural water. Finally, there's the cost factor. It's hard to believe, but if you consume the amount of water you should every day from bottled water, you'd spend over $2,000 per year. Over 15 years, the lifespan of the best water ionizer on the market that adds up to a lot of money. If the water we used at home cost what even cheap bottled water cost, our monthly water bills would run $9,000. $15 billion per year is spent on bottled water in the U.S. 
and over a billion dollars worth of plastic ends up as trash. Is there a way to save the earth and save money at the same time? You know, spending two dollars for a small 12 ounce bottle of water is, what is it, five, six, seven times more expensive than fueling your car. Doesn't make sense, does it? Especially when you're buying water that is acidic. You're buying water that may be devoid of minerals. You're buying water that has a positive ORP that is damaging. Doesn't make sense, does it? Maybe there's a way to produce your own clean water. Well, it would be nice to have a glacier in our backyard, mm -hmm. <laughs> or it would be nice to have a, a fresh mountain spring that's just percolating out of, out of an aquifer um, in, in, you know, in, in the earth. Um, most people don't have that. But what we do know, interestingly enough, is in places where that does exist, one of the key components is this clean, natural base water. If you care about the earth and your pocketbook and are currently drinking purified bottled tap water, get a carbon filter for your faucet and use a safe reusable water bottle. However, if you want to improve your health, drinking ionized alkaline Kangen water is a better choice. Like natural ancestral waters, it is microclustered, contains alkaline minerals, and has a negative ORP, making it an antioxidant and it cost a little more than one dollar a day for unlimited amounts. There's no doubt that the U.S. is experiencing a crisis in healthcare. We spend more on healthcare than any other country, but rank just 37th out of 191 in performance. For the first time in the last 200 years, U.S. life expectancy is expected to decline, not increase. You die earlier and spend more time disabled if you're in America than in most other advanced countries. According to the Centers for Disease Control, over 60 million people in the U.S. are obese. That's 34% of the population. 50 million people have high blood pressure. 13.5 million people have coronary heart disease with 1.5 million suffering heart attacks every year. 16 million people have type 2 diabetes. 41 million are pre-diabetic. 95,000 people are diagnosed with colon cancer each year. The solution? A pill for every ill and an ill for every pill. The pharmaceutical industry is a $680 billion giant and our lifestyle keeps them in business. Eat, drink, and be merry, then call 911 for a surgeon. Fortunately, we are experiencing a paradigm shift, a sea change in how many people view their health, from treatment of symptoms to prevention and optimal wellness, from disease care to health care. Many experts in new medicine or new biology believe that dehydration and chronic acidosis are the underlying causes of many diseases. They believe we are chronically dehydrated on top of being overly acidic due to our modern diet and lifestyle. These two factors combined set the stage for the development of most, if not all, illness. Most people don't believe that dehydration is a problem because they drink fluids, coffee, tea, soda, etc. But chronic dehydration has no obvious symptoms. It's not like the man dying of thirst in the desert. And you can be chronically dehydrated even if you think you are consuming enough fluid. Adequate hydration is critical to how our body functions and heals itself. And water, pure water, is the natural way to stay hydrated. What we need to understand is what is water and what is not water. We as a civilization or as a modern civilization or modern culture have begin to think of water as tea, as soda, as milk, as energy drinks, as coffee. Um, it has water or liquid substance to it, but it is not water. Okay. Um, even what comes out of our tap 
and what is in the bottled water. Um, while structurally, maybe the water molecule, if we, once we understand how water exists in its natural state before modern times, we'll realize that even that is not necessarily the water that our body evolved to exist on. How can one determine if they're drinking enough water is the question. Um, first thing is, if you're thirsty, you're way behind. Okay, that, that, that's a clear point. Our thirst mechanism doesn't kick in until we're already slightly dehydrated. So if we wait till we get thirsty, then we are already beginning to become dehydrated and might experience symptoms like not thinking quite as clearly or beginning to feel fatigued or muscles may cramp up. Um, you may even start to feel hungry. And a lot of times hunger is really a, a sign of thirst. We are born 95% hydrated. As we grow up, we lose a little more water every year. When we reach middle age, we're about 70% water. In our 60s, maybe 60 to 65%. A steady decline until death when we are just 50% water. There are several signs of chronic dehydration that arise when the body enters survival mode and begins to preserve water for the most vital functions. There are five distinct conditions related to chronic dehydration where the body begins to ration water. Asthma, allergies, hypertension, constipation, and type 2 diabetes. Symptoms include exhaustion, lack of energy, headaches, skin problems, obesity, and joint pain. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, the acid-alkaline balance of the body is disrupted, leading to chronic low-grade acidosis and a host of modern diseases related to that condition. Don't wait until you're thirsty. Have a glass of ionized water. It's microclustered, alkaline, and contains active hydrogen and bicarbonate buffers. Critical is first thing in the morning, wake up and have a big glass of water. Um, Make sure you drink a big glass of water through the day and see how you feel. It, it, it's sometimes incredible and the effects can be very dramatic because people have never really had clean, natural water. I want to use an example of an endurance athlete and specifically show the needs of hydration in the endurance athlete and how that also can re relate to the everyday athlete. Um, the person who's mowing their lawn and taking care of their kids, who's working, going to the gym. Um, you know, the weekend warrior um, and how critical hydration is. We know that an athlete who is 1% dehydrated could have a 3% reduction in performance. Now, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. Um, an athlete can spend hours and hours training. Um, and in a, for example, a one hour event, you know, a 3% reduction is almost two minutes. And that's the difference between winning or losing a race. One of the most important things you can do is to make sure you have enough fluid the night before. You cannot catch up the same day. When you're dehydrated, um, you build up lactic acid and you don't clear it. When you're dehydrated, um, the muscles don't receive the nutrients as effectively. When you're dehydrated, the cells, as we've talked about, don't communicate well with one another. When you're dehydrated, the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood diminishes. So you can see oxygen, energy production, neurological connections between cells are all critical to that endurance as well as that the power athlete. Taking that example of the endurance athlete to the everyday person, you can see how you can become fatigued. You can see how your thinking may not be quite as sharp as it needs to be. Um, you can see how hunger could play a role, or you begin to yawn, um, or your muscles are a little bit tight from sitting in um, the same place throughout the day. Hydration is critical. It's critical to the athletic endurance performer. It's critical to the everyday endurance 
athlete who wants to make it from the morning to the night as effectively and efficiently as they possibly can. Alkaline ionized water is a great choice for hydration for competition athletes, recreational athletes, and everyday people because it is microclustered and the free hydrogen and bicarbonates help neutralize acid buildup and toxins. Chronic low-grade acidosis is a condition that develops over time and affects the quality of life and our ability to enjoy optimal health. It starts with our diet, acid-forming foods and drinks. Our sedentary lifestyle, poor digestion and poor elimination add to the problem. The fluids between and within our cells become more acidic. To maintain balance, the body mobilizes buffers, minerals and hydroxyl ions from the bones and other tissues. This, in turn, leads to osteoporosis, and the overall process results in poor health, chronic illness, arthritis, and sluggish lymph system. An acidic condition for the body is very unhealthy. Um, when the body is chronically acidic, um, illnesses can develop. Think of your cells like a fish in a bowl of water. When the fish are sick, what do you do? Do you give them a pill? Of course not. That would not solve the problem at all. They would still be sick. You change the water, give them the proper pH and ORP so they thrive. pH stands for potential hydrogen and is a measure of the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. pH is neutral at 7.0. Above that is alkaline, below that is acidic. It's a logarithmic scale. Each increase in pH means 10 times more or less hydrogen is present. Alkaline ionized water has a pH between 8.0 and 9.5. Your body uses a system of buffers to keep the pH of your blood in a tight range of between 7.35 and 7.45, slightly more alkaline than pure water. The body relies on a very tight level of of pH or hydrogen atoms to control lots of function within the body. When the body becomes acid, systems begin to malfunction. Um, you know, we, we understand fish tanks and swimming pools. Um, when they're acid, you need to make a change. When, when a fish tank is acid, fish die. When a pool becomes too acid, you don't want to go in it. When rain is acid from sulfuric acid and, and other too much carbon dioxide, it breaks um, statues, they begin to disintegrate. And we know acid rain and damages lake. Well, our body becomes a sink for this acidity. And when this acidity builds up, it in essence is one of the reasons for disease in, in, in our body. Um, bones begin to demineralize. Um, our ability to create energy decreases. Our, our immune system becomes depressed. The inflammation for aches and pains increases. Not a good thing to be acid. Dr. Linda Frasetto has proposed a revolutionary hypothesis that obesity is an evolutionary adaptation. While at one time we were able to metabolize our food and dispose of the normal acid waste through our kidney and liver using the bicarbonate buffer system, the sheer amount of acid waste that the body must handle today has created a problem. In order to protect the internal organs from damage, the body has adapted and now stores acid waste in the fat cells, as well as turning it into cholesterol, uric acid, kidney stones, and other storage forms. In her book, The Chemistry of Success, Dr. Susan Lark describes the effects of chronic low-grade acidosis. First, you tend to tire easily and become fatigued, retain toxins and heavy metals, lack energy to achieve your goals, become more pessimistic, develop chemical sensitivities, experience stiffness and joint pain, brain fog and chronic fatigue. Several long-term medical problems are due to chronic acidosis. High blood pressure, autoimmune disorders, cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and inflammation. Eighty percent of the foods we consume leave behind acid waste that the body has to deal with. A trip down the modern grocery store aisle finds very few alkaline-forming foods. 
Even the foods we think of as wholesome and nutritious leave behind metabolic waste products that are acid. And of course, junk food falls into the acid-forming category. Most of the fluids that people consume today are acid. Um, sodas contain citric acid, um, energy drinks, phosphoric acid, and caffeinated beverages, and coffee, and, and many different commercial teas. Sugar, acid. Tap water, acid. Um, not a good thing for our system. Natural water is alkaline. Fruits, vegetables are alkaline. Um, Stress-reducing activities are alkaline. So you see the link here. Things that are beneficial to our body tend to be alkaline creating. It allows the body to buffer damage of its processes of energy production. In addition to our diet, there are several ways our modern lifestyle increases the acid load on the body. Physical and mental stress reduce oxygenation and blood flow and increase muscle tension. Strong emotions like anger, fear, hostility, anxiety, or excitement. Vigorous exercise, which produces lactic acid, pyruvic acid, and CO2, decreasing muscle pH. Frequent airplane travel with cabin air lower in oxygen and higher in CO2. Over-the-counter and prescription medicines and vitamins. All these things produce more acid for the body to deal with. Consuming more acid is like consuming and sucking life out of your system. You have a certain ability to buffer that and you will break down. So water in its more alkaline state, it provides it more of a capacity you know, to handle some of the stressors of life that we face or the choices that we face. Drinking ionized alkaline water, the equivalent of ancestral or glacial water, is an affordable, practical, and accessible solution to provide the body with a constant stream of alkaline bicarbonate buffers to neutralize acidity with no side effects. The cycle of wellness begins with a diet that contains more alkalizing foods and ionized alkaline water. Moderate exercise, good digestion, and complete daily elimination are also important. This leads to more alkaline fluids within and outside of the cells. Calcium and other minerals support bone density instead of being used as buffers. An alkaline body leads to better digestion, less illness, fewer colds or flu, a feeling of well-being, better lymphatic flow, more energy and stamina. Alkaline ionized kangen water provides hydration, alkaline buffers, and antioxidant activity which keeps the body in homeostasis allowing it to heal itself. Japanese scientists investigated the Russian research about Hunza water and found that electrolysis could be used to create living water with properties similar to Hunza water. This is now known as functional water, micro water, ionized water, or kangen water. Kangen is a Japanese word that means return to origin, or in chemistry, reduced, having an extra electron. In the U.S., Kangen water is the trademark of Enagic USA, who market top-of-the-line water ionizers. Anyone with an ion water generator can make Kangen water from tap water. Water is first filtered, then exposed to an electrical charge in the electrolysis chamber of the generator. Alkaline ionized water is called living water. It is similar in atomic structure to the waters that the people of Hunza drink directly from glacial streams in the high Himalayas. It is fresh, invigorating, life-enhancing, free radical scavenging, and delicious. Full-scale development of water ionizers started in 1954, fueled by research at several agricultural universities on the effects of ionic water, especially acid water, on plants. Experiments on the human body followed, conducted by Japanese doctors and other scientists around the world. In Japan, hospitals and clinics have used purified, electrically restructured, ionized alkaline water for over 30 years to treat a number of disease conditions. Following efforts by Japanese medical doctors and agricultural doctors, the water ionizer was approved for medical therapeutics by the Japanese Ministry of Health and Rehabilitation in January 1966. Well, we don't have a glacier. We don't typically have 
you know, fresh streaming water. Um, one way to do it, and this has been studied by the Japanese, is a process called ionization. It's actually um, running some electricity through the water and it breaks um, the filtered water into some of the natural properties. It, it provides the microclustering. It increases the alkalinity. It, it provides a high ORP or this, these free electron states to the water. Um, so in a lot of ways, we're getting some of the similar properties to natural base water. It even um, changes the molecular structure. We can see a, a more health-giving pattern when looked under an electron mic microscope. So ionization is, is an option and a choice for many people if you don't have a glacier. So the Russians discovered the property of the water, all these properties, and they, they developed an electrolysis system. They found a way to actually separate the water and, and get these properties. And the Japanese improved upon this process and improved upon it, improved upon it, and have come up with the best ionizer available now. And I really do appreciate the work that the Japanese have put into it because of the diligence and the care that these ionizers are made with. Numerous peer-reviewed scientific studies have been performed in well-respected universities and hospitals around the world, which show the benefit of alkaline ionized water. Some of those benefits are weight loss, releasing toxins in stored body fat, normalize blood sugar, support healthy colon function, resolve urinary tract infections, relieve asthma and chronic respiratory conditions, stop abnormal gut fermentation, reduce proliferation of candida, fungus, and undesirable microforms, reduce chronic pain, improve wound healing with oxidizing acidic ion water. The most important thing we don't want to drink water that has pollutants and that can be harmful to our system. So when we're drinking water, it would be nice to know that what you're drinking is clean. The first step to creating alkaline ionized water is to have clean source water. Enagix Kangen water generators use an activated carbon filter that removes chlorine, volatile organic chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, benzene, trihalomethane compounds, radon, solvents, and many other man-made chemicals found in tap water. Ionized water is pure or virgin water. Everything water has been exposed to leaves an electromagnetic frequency signature or imprint. Ionized water is virgin water because the EMF have been reset. There are four very specific properties. Um, to these healing waters that are found in these mountainous regions that are flowing from the glaciers. And um, there's been a lot of research on this. The Russians discovered it and they discovered a way to make it. And those four properties are, it's hexagonal. And what that basically means is it's shaped like a snowflake. You look at it under a microscope. It's beautiful, it's crystal structured. Ionized water has been restructured. The water molecules cluster in groups of 4 to 6 instead of the normal 10 to 15. Nuclear magnetic resonance has documented this difference. The reduction in cluster size helps the body absorb ionized water more quickly and efficiently. Also micro-clustered, micro meaning small clusters. It's broken down very small so the body can easily absorb it. It's very bioavailable. It was very alkaline. pH is around 9.5. Some were found at 9.0, um, so it really helped the body um, as far as not adding acid waste to the body and helping to keep the body very alkaline. You may hear a term, it's called clustering. The water molecules um, naturally exist in a cluster, and some people call it hexagonal, which would be six. So they naturally exist in a cluster of six water molecules. Um, the water is found through taps and commercial water sources is a much larger cluster of water molecules. Um, there are many beneficial properties to that and it, it enhances the body's ability to hydrate. I was really excited when I started actually to quote unquote play with the water in my own kitchen with different supplements, with powders and tea and oil and all the different things that I worked with and you could really see the life to the water. I could put, for example, uh, my green vegetable powder drink in Kangen water versus a bottled water in a tap water and actually see that this water has an energy to it. In fact, it will stir itself and become 
very, very absorbable, and you can watch that happen within the water. You can watch it make tea instantly, whereas other waters cannot do that. It cannot get in and penetrate those nutrients and pull those nutrients out and put it right in the water where you're drinking it, where it can then go in and penetrate your cell walls at that same level. Many people complain that they find it difficult to drink large amounts of water because it makes them feel bloated and heavy. Regular water, tap or bottled, is composed of large clusters of water molecules and has no life energy or electrical charge. It sits in your stomach like a stagnant pond. In contrast, drinking ionized alkaline water is easy because it tastes much better than tap or bottled water and the smaller molecular cluster size and life energy it carries allows it to be absorbed more quickly. And the other feature is it has a negative ORP and what that stands for is oxidation reduction potential. Not to get real big and fancy, a lot of people are like, oh, what is that? It is the ability of that water to reduce the oxygenation uh, of the body. And the property of the water that actually gives it this negative ORP or the, the potential to reduce the aging in our body is the active hydrogen that it consists of. ORP, also known as redox potential or oxidation reduction potential, measures the tendency of a molecule to gain or lose electrons. It is measured in millivolts. When a substance has an electron to donate, it measures with a negative charge. When a substance loses an electron and is positively charged, the ORP is plus. Negatively charged substances act as an antioxidant. Positively charged substances act as oxidation enhancers. What we have learned to understand is this water in its energetic state has an abundance of free electrons. Okay. The Earth is loaded with free electrons and where that comes from is lightning strikes. Okay. So we have all this energy potential in the Earth that it's imparted to the water. And when we consume the water, um, you're basically consuming a antioxidant. We, we know vitamin C, vitamin E, all these particular nutrients that you may take. In its natural state, water has a similar, even perhaps more powerful ability to quench out free radicals or inflammatory processes that may occur from natural processes within our body to create energy, to fight infections, as well as to quench out some of the destructive things that we may do in our modern life from pharmaceutical agents, cigarettes, alcohol, over-exercising, stress. Water can help buffer that in its natural state. Like natural ancestral water, ionized water holds a measurable negative electrical charge. This is what gives the water vitality or life energy. Almost all other drinking water available to us has a positive charge which means they are oxidizing agents. Only negatively charged water can efficiently flush out toxins and poisons in the body at the cellular level and neutralize free radicals. A free radical is a molecule of oxygen that has lost an electron and is positively charged. It is also known as active oxygen. This active oxygen is hunting for a replacement electron from somewhere else in the body. Active oxygen damages the cell membrane and even DNA. Antioxidants produced by the body and from our food provide free electrons to stabilize active oxygen-free radicals. Ionized water is one of the most powerful antioxidants known. Ionized water has millions of hydroxyl ions per glass. No other water has this incredible benefit. Acid alkaline is the amount of hydrogen that's present. When there is tremendous amounts or a large amount of hydrogen, a system is termed acid, the pH is considered low. When there is lesser amounts of hydrogen, it's, it's alkaline. The second component of water in its natural state, as we just spoke about, was having natural minerals, okay? Right. Um, being able to get these nutrients which are critical to our health and those don't exist for the most part um, in commercially bought or tap waters. Water in a alkaline state provides the body with a greater capacity to buffer 
some of the natural processes that stress the body as well as the lifestyle processes that also stress the system. And drinking water in a natural alkaline state provides you with a substance that is not acid, <laughs> that is not damaging to your system. So you can look at it from two different ways, eliminating all the unhealthful things that we don't even think about and consuming clean, natural base water. Is ionized alkaline water safe for anyone to consume? Certain medical conditions require fluid restriction, so you should follow your doctor's advice. For these people, because of the unique imbalances that are created, extra fluid is not processed well. So the standard conventional uh, mechanism, don't take fluid because you can't process it, let's minimize it. While the cells intracellularly are starving. See, the, the problem is that the fluids can no longer get into the cells effectively. Um, is it because people are not drinking or haven't drinking natural water? Um, certainly one component of it. I mean, it has to do with the, the health of the actual cellular membrane. So for these people, well, I don't want to say drink all the water you can, but I think you will find for whatever water that you can, or fluid that you can, by consuming water in a natural state, you may begin to enhance the intracellular component of the water and lessen some of that extracellular water that exists. And in doing so, you may find that your fluid intake may gradually increase, and that would be beneficial. Um, how that helps your ulti ultimate condition, obviously it is an unknown since there's many factors involved. Um, but water in its natural state, microclustered, alkalinized, is gonna give you, in essence, the most bang for your buck. Don't waste your fluid on coffee, don't waste your fluid on energy drinks or sodas, absolutely not. That's just gonna make your condition worse. All water is not created equal.